the goal here is to tell a story that breaks, it's kind of tiny, sorry, but the goal here is to break a, uh, tell a story that breaks their vehicle, internal, and external-based false beliefs and break them on down. And what you're trying to do is cause an epiphany where they decide, oh my gosh, I gotta buy this product instead of me say it. Okay, that's the ninjury. <laughs> that's the trick. That's the hard part right there. If I have to come to you and say, you should buy this product, it means I didn't cause the epiphany in your head. Right, you should be able to tell a story and the, they need to go, you know, I've, I need this. If you've done that, that's what we call the epiphany bridge. Okay, so the easiest way to tell a story, and the easiest way to do this, because it sounds kind of intense, and it, it, it's totally like, you guys seen the movie Inception? Yeah. It's totally that, right? What you're doing is you are, you're going to tell a story in this format. Okay, and we call this the epiphany bridge script. Now, the epiphany bridge script, let me uh, actually pull it up here real quick. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is uh, tell your backstory. Okay. What's my backstory? No money, broke. No money, broke, right? What's my internal desire? My internal and external desire. Right? On the outside, I'm like, yeah, babe, I know nothing but a thing, right? On the inside, I'm freaking out. And I make sure I say that. Why would it be important for the audience to hear me say my internal and external desires? They can relate to, that. They can relate to it. They can relate to it. And they're like, oh man, I have the same internal and external desires. And for some reason, it's, it's perceived as extremely vulnerable. So they get vulnerable with you because you got vulnerable with them. This is the easiest place to become vulnerable inside of a story. Okay. What wall did I hit in my story? Yeah. My, my dad said no, right? Thankfully, right? But without a wall, would story be interesting? Can you imagine if Frodo left the Shire and just like walked to Mordor and dropped the ring? In? <laughs> you know what I mean? Harry Potter's just like, hey, kills Voldemort. You, you, you know what I mean? Like conflict is our human nature. We want to see that inside of a story. You have to hit walls. It's, you're not interesting to follow unless you can hit a wall in front of people, okay? So the next part is the wall there. And then what was the epiphany that I had? Resourceful. I started becoming resourceful. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta learn how to do this, right? I started going and trying all these different businesses. And let's say I'm telling the, because you can tell the same story for multiple products. Um, let's say I'm telling the story of how I got to work at ClickFunnels, right? What was the epiphany that I had there? Holy crap, I would, I would include, these are like little chunks, right? I'm gonna, it's like adult Legos, okay? I'm gonna take a Lego, all right, I'm gonna put the M16 with dot-com secrets bit right there. Okay, and that's how we do it. Um, what was my new plan once I learned what ClickFunnels was and saw that Funnel Hacking Live was coming up? Yeah, it's like, I wanna go to Funnel Hacking Live. Now, if it's all smooth sailing, I'm gonna have a major issue. So I don't, what I do though, is I have another conflict, okay? And you'll notice in good story, there's a dance between step five and six, where we go, plan, conflict, plan, conflict, right? Those good movies where they like throw another curveball at you right at the end, you're like, oh, what? It's like Inception, they bring back in the top and it doesn't fall. Oh my gosh, was it all? Right, that's, that's why we like those kinds of movies, right? It's a big deal. Yeah, but the good story usually has a dance between multiple plans and conflicts, plans and conflicts, plans and conflicts, okay? Um, what did I achieve in that story of me going to Fun Hacking Live? Working with Russell. Yeah, working with Russell, Fun Hacking Live itself. Okay, and this is usually where people make a big mistake in the way they tell story. This is one of the reasons that the story is not interesting for the listener, is if they skip number eight. Number eight is we have to feel the transformation. Okay, and, and Russell gives the example um, inside of uh, Expert Secrets of Lightning McQueen, right? Lightning McQueen in the movie Cars, he's going around, he's spent all this time, and all he wants is the Piston Cup. The entire movie is about Piston Cup. The audience is invested over an hour and a half with the idea that it's all about the Piston Cup. And what happens right as he's about to go win it? He stops, turns around and pushes his buddy across and says, just an empty cup. Oh, he changed. Then we get the feel goods. Then we walk out and say, that was a good movie. 
If he had just won the thing, we'd be like, yeah, it was a pretty good movie. When we don't care about the outcome of the movie or we don't care about how the story ends, it's usually because there's not enough transformation and we don't feel enough of a bond with the protagonist. Okay? Story is like a marketer's weapon. Um, who's that? I think it's Seth Godin that has another book. It says, all marketers are liars. And it has liars crossed out and says storytellers. <laughs> right? <laughs> we tell a lot of stories. Story is uh, massive, massive power to influence. Please don't lie. Okay? But the way you tell your story certainly matters. Helpful? This is good. Hashtag good crap. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is the story, though, that we know causes the epiphany. When we go through, I mean, I can't tell, I mean, I'm just going to show you how much of a geek and nerd I was in high school, but proudly, all right? I was, like, ticked that the force wasn't real when I saw, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? <laughs> I want a lightsaber, <laughs> right? And it's because of that, right? It's because they know that this is the script that causes epiphanies in heads. And I know a lot of you guys have heard this, but a lot of this comes from what we call the hero, it's not us, it's from a guy named Michael Haig, it's called The Hero's Two Journeys, and every story has two journeys. We need the outer journey of trying to win the Piston Cup, but what we really are wanting is that inner transformation. If we don't see that in the character, we don't care about the character. If you guys ever watched a movie where like, you don't care that the main guy died? It's because they didn't follow this. Right? You can go back and watch it and be like, this big, like, <laughs> by comparison, one of the Star Wars that came out recently, they hated it. Dumbest movie ever. And it's because they spent no time following the story script. Michael Haig was the guy that created this formula, this format of storytelling. Will Smith was like super into it, went and saw it, took his course, and then hired Michael Haig to help him write, help him write the, um, the movie script for the movie Hitch. And they followed this to the T. And you'll see it in there. Ever since then, pretty much every single movie that Hollywood has put out has followed this script to the T because it, there's, so, there's like a breadth of emotions that you feel. Internal desires, external desires. This is all he wants on the outside, but he's really how he's feeling. Wall, conflict, up, back and forth, plan, conflict, right? Go get the thing, but how did you change? You better have, right? And we want that. This is how to tell a story that uh, moves an audience. Um, and so that's, uh, anyway, right up there at the top of there. Um, now, to answer some of the questions on what story we tell, the easiest story to tell is your own story of your own journey to the new product. <clears throat> okay? Tell your own story of your own journey to the new product. Um, I was asking, uh, who was it? It was a. Uh, I was asking some companies, uh, why do you sell what you sell? We have the best service in the valley, and we help people do X, Y, and Z. <laughs> barf, barf, barf. <laughs> it was straight features, and they said, we have the best features. We have the best this, we have the best that. And I was like, nobody cares. <laughs> right? Who, right? Uh, what was the story? How, how did you decide to do this business? And a lot of businesses had never thought of that. Why did I choose to do the thing that I'm doing right now? Somewhere down the road, you had the, the epiphany. You know, I should go into this internet marketing game. What's that story? I've had some people reach out to me and they say, Stephen, I can't sell like you do because I did not have a broke history where we were basically living in the gutter, right? And that's been a big concern for some people. But you have your own story. And what you need to do is sit back and the, what you're doing is you're pulling back and saying, where did I make the decision? Holy cow, I should go into this inner marketing game. What's that story? And if you take a moment, I challenge you tonight in the hotel room or wherever you're staying, sit back and start thinking like, why am I doing this? Because if you go track backwards and follow your footsteps backwards, and you'll start to see that there were a few key moments that actually would make a very interesting story, especially if you tell it in this format. And if you go to your audiences and tell them, here's my backstory, here's, here's what I was after, both internal and external, like uh, in my internal desires and my external desires. And as I started moving towards that, I hit this crazy wall, it was nuts. And everything, my back was against the wall, it was crazy. And suddenly this thing happened where I had an epiphany, oh my gosh, and I started moving forward. Wait, that's the way. We all think it's this other way. When we start moving forward, here's the plan, conflict, plan, conflict, plan, conflict. 
then finally I was able to achieve this thing, but honestly, it wasn't nearly as impactful to me to how it changed me personally. Think about the first speech I gave here that did that over a full speech, okay? And it's because of that. It's very powerful for your audiences to hear you tell those things. Helpful? Yeah. You, oh, mic drops all over the place. Mm, oink. <laughs> okay. Now, here are the results of a good story. A good story, you know it's a good story, and your audience is really enjoying it, when you have changed their beliefs. That's the whole point of it. And what belief are you changing? Oh, man, I got to have this guy's product. And they poof, come to that conclusion on their own. Okay, very, very impactful. When you call, oh, right there. They have the epiphany uh, is causing their head that they should buy. Um, all good sales letters cause an identity crisis. I don't mean in like a super negative way. But the identity crisis that, well, I'll just tell you. Uh, when I saw ClickFunnels pop out for the first time, Russell knows this principle. And what he did is he said, he said, marketers are doing this now. Are you a marketer? Are you an entrepreneur? Why, yes, I am. Are you sure? Why, I, I, yeah, I thought so. Marketers are coming to get this thing. Well, because I am a marketer, let me step into ClickFunnels. Make sense? Sales letters that cause this is one of the greatest powers you can ever have in your life. That's why you give a new identity to people when they buy. Every checkout includes the purchase of an identity, not just a product. Oink. Oink juice right there. There's oink juice all over that. It's oink sauce. I was eating bacon back there, actually, right before I came up. <laughs> yeah, repeat. Yeah, yeah. Every, every checkout includes an identity purchase not just a product purchase. They're buying an identity. I bought into being a funnel hacker. And because I am, I will buy click funnels. Right? I am a capitalist pig. And because of that, I do things that freak me out. Right? And I'm okay with that. About 50% of the time, 51% of the averages, you know. <laughs> right? It's so scary. Okay. Um, you know that you've told a good story when the sale progresses. Remember the sales o meter, right? <laughs> I gotta come up with a better term for that, but that's kind of what's stuck. So um, you can sit back and say like, holy cow, look how sold they are, that's good. Um, I recently saw a video by Frank Kern and he had a, this big table of mints, these table mints all over this coffee table. And on the coffee table, um, he took out a whole bunch of mints and, um, or he had a big, big pile of them, and he took out a small handful and he said, this is the group of people that is ready to buy from you in 60, maybe 60 days, right? And then he goes, the mistake is that, and he dumped a huge pile of mints. This is the group that is ready to buy from you most likely in six months or something like that, okay? And then he's like, huge pile. This is the pile that's ready to buy from you within, you know, beyond that. And the issue that we have is that all of our marketing will be targeted at the person who's ready to buy now. And we're skipping past these massive pots that are in the three to six month range, right? You know how many people are posting that they have FOMO they're not here right now? <laughs> Got them! <laughs> you see what I'm saying? My messaging is also targeting those people who are trying to come next year, right? And so I'm targeting people who are just past the now phase, uh, the, the three to six month phase. Right? And that's why the sales o meter thing matters so much. Because I'm gonna go and I'm gonna tell a story and get them one third sold, two thirds sold. It's fine if you don't wanna, I'm not here to pressure anybody, that's fine. We step back, keep listening to my podcast, keep listening to other things I'm putting out, start doing more interviews. And then I'm gonna go back for another sale. Okay, now we, remember you were one third sold, two thirds sold, sweet. Make sense? It's an incubator process. And that's one of the powers of, of publishing consistently.